This is the Business Marketing and Finance Podcast. The podcast for all your business marketing and financial needs. Get insight from experienced professionals as they delve deep into their passions and share their knowledge each week with your host, Daryl James. Like to follow or learn more? You know what to do. Hit that subscribe button now. Welcome everyone to this week's BMF podcast. This is our Ask an Expert session and I'm here today with Terence Wannan, marketing consultant, community ambassador, upcoming author, longtime friend and successful businessman for the last 20 years. Terry, you want to say hello to everybody? Hey everyone, how's it going? Uh, pleasure man, pleasure to be here. Yeah, so Terry, could you just tell us a little bit about yourself, some of your background, some of the things that you've got up to? Um, my background in terms of, if I say start from work, you know, I've mm. always, even from school, mm. Um, I've always been into business, mm-hmm. you know. Um, so from school, that was very much my starting point. So education was always an, a major part of my growth. Mm-hmm. So, you know, uh, people probably flippantly say, you know, education is the key to success. But I generally think, you know, knowledge and education is, mm-hmm. and let that be your, your starting ground yeah, for yeah, more things. Foundation, so, yeah. Um, you no, know, I started off, like most people, you know, paper round, milk round, mm. you know, just getting out there mm. rather than doing nothing and mm. having a having a zest to work yeah, and, yeah. and make my own money. Mm-hmm. You know, so I started off there when I was at school, I did work placement. Um I had a job as a um I was a I used to do picture framing. Really? Yeah. Okay. I used to do picture framing like five pounds a week back, okay. in, back in them days. Which was a lot of money because, Yeah, yeah. Um it was a, it was quite a larger note mm. then. Mm. So it was a it was a Big show of yeah, yeah. success. Yeah. And five pounds a week was a, you know, for long hours, it was long hours after school. Yeah. Was a lot of money. So, so how old was you when, when you was at school? Uh, I must have been doing that when I was like 12. Oh, wow. Whether, okay. Whether that's okay. Legal, young age then, yeah. Whether yeah. that's legal or illegal, I'm not sure, <laughs> but, you know, it was done. Yeah. So um, even going to school when most of my peers, you know, would come to school with 50 pence and yeah, yeah. 20 pence. Yeah. I had a five pound note. Okay. And I had a few five pound notes. <laughs> so, Big difference. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that made a difference in yeah. general to how I was treated, how I was, yeah, spent, how, yeah. how I was looked at in school. Yeah. So yeah. from then I always remember having a strong presence, a strong stance. And yeah. He's on a different level to, yeah, most, yeah. to most of us. And with that, it might sound real as well, with that mm. carried a sense of pride and appearance. Mm-hmm. So I ensured that because I was the one who had probably money at school, you yeah. know, it wasn't a lot of money now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I also made sure I looked the sharpest at school. Yeah, yeah. My tie and my uniform was always sharp. So yeah. I walked into school with a presence. Yeah. yeah. Presence in pocket and present in mind. That's good. You know I, I mean? like that. Yeah. So, um, yeah, don't use it. <laughs> now, present in pocket and present in mind. So, um, and I just kind of continued chipped away. I did work experience as you do when you're at school. And yeah. I went on from work experience to be employed at the same company, mm-hmm. um, which was a retail outlet. Owned mm-hmm. by the Arcadia Group, which was a massive group back in the day. There was okay. Topman, Burton's, Dorothy yeah. Perkins, Evans, yeah. the Arcadia Group. So I became, I started off as work experience, then mm-hmm. I became sales assistant, then I became um, floor manager. Okay. So I sort of worked my way up there, and then, yeah, then yeah. I became, um, you know, and then we moved into another outlet, and I became manager of that store. So it was just, yeah. um, it was just a whole, a whole process yeah. which I got yeah. through. But and then from school, college. I went and studied um business and law at college actually. That was my that was my thing. Okay. Yeah. And then um I went into I didn't um my I wanted to be a lawyer. Mm-hmm. That was that was really my you know my my, my quest for success. I'm going to be a successful lawyer. Mm-hmm. Um that didn't happen. Um I just went straight into work and making money. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So um you know I think I I gotta say it could kind of all happen it seemed like it happened all quickly yeah but it didn't you know it took its time it took its blows yeah 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 um the key thing is to continue just just never just never never give up yeah i went to um nightclub owning okay um and that was a big step for me when i was 21 yeah you know nightclub restaurant so what made you want to go into that 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 type of type of work i didn't want to okay it was my brother who's it was um is is you know may his soul rest in peace he was a big push. He like he pushed me. He pushed me. Yeah. He was like a father and a mentor to me. So yeah. his whole thing was business. Yeah, he was yeah. an accountant by profession. Okay, yeah. And that's his whole thing was business. Everything yeah. about him business. But what he did was everything he did. He brought me along with him. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I didn't want him being involved in nightclubs or restaurants or anything, anything of the sort. But what yeah. he would do, he'd purchase it and say, "Listen, 
you can do this. Okay. And yeah. I said, go. Same with, same so, with, so we had a lot of belief in you then. Oh, yeah. Yeah. More, more than I probably had in myself. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because, you know, you think, but, and as you get older, you realise that most skills are just transferable. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because I think if I can manage a retail outlet, mm-hmm. I can manage a nightclub. It's just, it's just the same kind of management yeah, skills, yeah, yeah. just a different clientele. Yeah. And a different True. way about doing things. True. So, um, it's just, I, I, I found myself having to constantly transfer Transfer of skills just yeah. into different areas, yeah, yeah. but the skills foundation remained the same. Mm-hmm. So he did it with properties, did it with, did it with everything possible. You know what I mean? Yeah. Anything he he had a he had a hand in many many pies, and then yeah. anything he would say, oh, um, Terry, this is yours. Um, you can do that. You manage that. I'll be away for a day. And <laughs> it didn't come out for six months, <laughs> but it was it was all good. It was yeah. All good training. Yeah. So yeah. Um, and and uh, in the back of my mind as well, because I'm from I'm from inner city Birmingham. Mm-hmm. It was also key for me to always feel like I can give back or bring people along with me in, mm-hmm. the, pro- in the process. Mm-hmm. So in the back of my mind, I had a very strong sense of um, of, of charity, of support, mm-hmm. volunteering, just being able to give back something. You know, yeah, so yeah. that that that's sort of an underlying thing throughout my whole business. Sense, yeah, yeah, you know, giving back yeah. always. I mean, that's something I've seen over the years. That's for definite. I mean, we'll definitely get back into some of the companies that you've how to uh, birth and, and bring forth a market, but just touching on the community and stuff and the things that you've done charity wise, you know, can you tell us a little bit of the type of work you've done in the community? I mean, I know myself, but just mm-hmm. for the listeners. Um, I, I did a few number of things. Um, I started off, started off first, set up a football team, mm-hmm. which I'm very passionate about, um, which, is, which turned out to be like mentoring through sport, but it was a football team that seemed like it's been running for about 20 years now. Mm-hmm. Um, football team which we used um young people from innocent areas yeah them together to play football but but football was just very much the the reason to get young people together yeah and yeah. give me opportunity to now mentor them but use the sports as a tool of engagement yep yep and once involved we were able to do different other like, charity events mm-hmm. um you know play football for, play football with um, and raise money for mm-hmm. for local causes yeah um bring about togetherness in communities in terms of different um different factions of the community, different cultures of the community. Yeah. So um that you know, that always worked out very successful in terms of it was one of those one of those projects that had a strong visual sense in the community. Mm-hmm. Everyone knew about it, something you can see, something mm-hmm. people could see for themselves. The individuals involved, you can see other people see their changes, we can see the changes. That's good. So yeah. it's it's it was one of those one of those where they where the proof is in the pudding. Mm-hmm. You know, where you can actually evidence it. Yeah, you yeah. can speak to, uh, you know, 50, 60 young people at any point throughout the year. Yeah. And yeah. they say, oh, yeah, I've done football with Terry, but you know, uh, I didn't become a footballer. But th- but but the skills and the disciplines yeah. in there yeah. made me what I am today and so on and so on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I also set up a, a charity called Brosis, which is um, short for Brothers and Sisters. Yeah, yeah. Which is probably my biggest mm-hmm. um, to date, both in impact and both mm-hmm. in finance. And that was um that was born from a friend of a friend of mine that passed away um mm-hmm. um he had, he had HIV and he passed away mm-hmm. so on the back of his passing I decided to set up a charity to support people living with HIV AIDS yeah um and that was the first thing I did yeah in terms of the charity um there was a very niche market no one was doing it yeah um and I mean literally nobody was doing HIV AIDS for the black community mm-hmm. so I kind of had a niche market mm-hmm. it was very very unheard of it was untouched people people within the community culturally didn't want to talk about it they weren't yeah. involved address it yeah. address it no, yeah. no, nothing at all so I had a niche market you know and so when, when I threw myself into it it was like <laughs> wow what is this and what's all this about and yeah, yeah. why is he doing it and, but it, it made people made people's ears stand up so what was some of the hurdles that you faced when you know like you said it was something brand new nobody had heard of it especially in terms of the black community nobody really wanted to speak about the, those those type of issues, you know, what what type of barriers did you face coming up? Barriers I faced. Um, one was convincing people that there was a need for a service like this, mm-hmm. because the, even because it never existed, people probably there was there was that sense that if it doesn't exist, it's not needed. Okay, but, but everything's got to start from somewhere. Definitely, you yeah. know what I mean. Yeah. Um, it's like saying, "Oh, we're fine eating with our hands until someone says, let 'Let's start using knife and forks.'" Okay. Yeah. So it has to come from somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so with that, I had to convince people there's a need for this service. Um, mm-hmm. 
And the way to evidence the need for that service was mm-hmm. the, the statistics evidence that there was a large amount of HIV AIDS within the African and African Caribbean community. Yeah. What the statistics didn't show was treatment and services to match those statistics. Yeah, true. Yeah, I can understand that. Yeah. So um, I'm saying, well, you know it exists. Mm-hmm. People are dying. Mm-hmm. People are not getting treated, and there's no culturally sensitive service to deliver any level of service at all, mm-hmm. or culturally appropriate services. Yeah. So you we, we found out there's a problem, but there is no solution. Mm-hmm. I will be part of the solution. Mm-hmm. So it's convincing people that I am part of the solution. Yeah, yeah. And when I say people, that meant individuals in the community. Mm-hmm. It meant stakeholders. It meant the National Health Service. Yeah. It meant government. It meant everyone across the board, basically. And did those, like you were saying, the National Health Service, did they actually help? Did they fund? Did they yeah, put in? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I, you know, I, I was... They, they couldn't... It was, it was hard for them to say no, because... Because no one else was doing it. Yeah. But they knew we had a problem. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, they helped fund, you know, to a tune of probably about two million pounds, if mm-hmm. I remember correctly. Yeah. And now that we had, you know, other, other, funding, other funding sources. Yeah. Was that over, over a period of, what, three years, five years? About five years. Yeah. Um, but that was just from NHS alone. Yeah, yeah. Um, we had like, different funding sources that, you know, that, that, was, that would put into the pot. As well, but, yeah. But the reason why the pot got that big was because... Um, Hopefully, I can. I'm going to try and vocalize this so yeah. the listeners can visualize this. Okay, yeah, yeah. I'm going to try as I'm using my hands, but they, <laughs> they, they can't see it. Yeah. So, you have HIV AIDS as the core reason why I set the charity up. Yes. As a branch of a HIV AIDS, I, I had a and working with service users because there's lots of African Caribbeans came out of the woodwork then saying, Yeah, I'm positive, but I don't get no support. Mm-hmm. Some of those very people had other issues around substance misuse and so on. Yeah. That's because they're using probably. You, some of them are using drugs as a means to suppress their diagnosis mm-hmm. because there was no one helping them. There yeah. was no support. Yeah. Yeah. So you can understand that if you have an issue but there's no help, yeah. you're going to you turn, turn to, to other things. things. Yeah. Yeah. So there's substance misuse and so on. So mm-hmm. what I did was that with that then I then tapped into um, substance misuse money mm-hmm. to, have, um, to have drug workers yeah. come on board to help those who are, who are already so that help the clinical practitioners who are doing HIV to help yeah. their Service users, so I now have drug workers. Yep, yep. So once with drugs comes crime. Okay, yeah. So what I then then tapped into um, criminal justice money. Okay, yeah, yeah. To yeah. help, yeah. The criminal justice workers to help the drug workers to yeah. help the s- drug workers service users to help yeah. those who are involved in HIV. Yep, yes. You can see the pattern. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I can see. see it. It's all coming together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so with so also when the drugs comes to crime, so I impl- employed um, criminal justice workers, yeah, employed volunteers. Um, so you now have HIV, drugs, and you have crime. So with the crime now, mm-hmm. um, I secured money like from the Home Office and from mm-hmm. different yeah West Midlands Police and from yeah, different yeah. angles now. So I'm seeing this part build up. It's all one big picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then if you looked at it as as now it's a holistic approach to yeah. HIV rather than just look at HIV within its own nucleus. Yeah, so it's yeah. now a holistic approach to HIV. So that worked. And then I'm now realising that it's a much bigger thing than just any one thing. Mm-hmm. And that became that became very successful. I ended up employing in a total of I think 16 staff in total. Oh, wow, that's really good. Um, 16 staff. And, um, we, we, you know, we had, you know, we had, we had, Local presence, national presence, and international presence. And I was out in yeah. the Caribbean because then I, as part of a paper, I devised a paper um, using culture as a form of treatment, mm-hmm. which, which was never was never um, used in treatment before. Culture mm-hmm. as a form of treatment. So I was involved with you know, the Minister of Culture of Jamaica and so on, yeah, yeah. using culture as treatment. Yeah. So which means though you have your you know your, your medical treatment and though yeah. you have your um, you, know, you might have alternative therapy and so on. Yeah. yeah. Culture. Just um, I mean, being culture specific when delivering treatment mm-hmm. was helping our service users mm-hmm. because they were, it was all relatable. Yeah, yeah. So um, yeah. So that, it just worked from strength to strength. Um, and that that worked for that worked for, that worked for a very long, worked a very 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 long time. It, it still stands. It still stands now in terms of service users are, you know, 
uh, living longer, living better, a lot better understanding. Mm-hmm. Hospitals, clinics are now more culturally appropriate with culturally appropriate images. Yeah. Cult- culturally appropriate means of communicating. Yeah, yeah. And just a workforce in yeah. terms of African Car- African Caribbean African Caribbeans working within that sector. Okay. Yeah, yeah. In that sector. I mean, it sounds like it it, it pretty much rippled. Once you 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 drop the stone, I guess. Oh well, you know, um, having something that it started out just being focused on those who who was you know had HIV and AIDS, and then you then took more of a holistic approach and more of an all round approach and was mm-hmm. helping them with you know drug misuse, helping them with housing, I believe as well. Because yeah. I remember um, I was volunteering for a number of years as well with the with the charity. And um, housing and, and yeah. debt management and yes. all types of different, you know, angles and things like that. And I feel like that's really, really good when you're working with the community and things like that. I mean, what what motivates you to to help people? I mean, I know you spoke about it was your friend that passed away for you to start this charity, yeah. but I also know that you've helped so many others outside of charity work. Um, mm-hmm. You know, community events and mentoring yeah. and you know like he says, working with the young people and you, you touched on it a little bit when you talk about um, working with the young people in football, oh, yeah. but it goes a lot bigger than that. Yeah. So could you just like tell us a little bit more about the mentoring side of things? You know, I think in business, you see, we all, we all measure our success differently. Mm-hmm. And um, I, 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 I'm a true believer that my success is by what I give rather than what I gave. Mm-hmm. So, um, what I gain is very much what I go out there and work hard for and so on and so on. Yeah. But what I give is really that I, is where I feel like I'm winning. Okay, yeah. That's where I feel like I'm winning when I'm able to give. Cause I, it's hard to give when you have nothing. Even mm-hmm. if it's very little. If you've got something, then you can give. Yeah. If you have nothing. So, I believe that I'm doing it. It's all purposeful. Yeah. So, when I, when I give and, I'm, and my rewards are not always like my rewards my rewards are not always financial. Mm-hmm. So my rewards is when I see um, people that I've worked closely still being successful, still mm-hmm. doing well, mm-hmm. and passing the baton on. And that's all. And that's what life is about: passing the baton. None of us are going to be here forever. Yes, so it's yeah. about passing the baton on. Yeah. You know, so it's like a big relay of life. Yeah. Um, I do my bit. I pass the baton on. He or she does their bit. They pass the baton on. Yeah. And so on. That's the only way. You know, we leave any mm-hmm. strong sense of legacy yeah, yeah, by yeah. passing the baton on. Yeah. And I've always. Um, and even some, you know, even some of the small things we take for granted, like mm-hmm. knowledge, you know, like knowledge and time. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, at one point, I probably didn't put a value on time itself. Mm-hmm. But as you grow into business, you understand how how valuable time itself is. Yeah. So for every hour I give to someone, mm-hmm. I can I I can calculate that as a I can calculate that financially. Yeah. Okay. So that, that that's a given for me. Okay. Yeah. You know what I mean? I've 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 over the years. Worked up to that stage, I've earned that. Mm-hmm. If you want to look at it as a, I say it was a rate. If I was on a thousand pounds a rate, a thousand pounds an hour, mm-hmm. and I'm giving someone an hour of my time, yeah, that is me giving a thousand pounds in, in time, yeah, someone in value, yeah, yeah. So um, it's it's always about I think being able to give back, feel, being confident enough to give back, mm-hmm. feeling that's the right thing to do, and like not being greedy, mm-hmm. and just feel like you, I'll always be rewarded. I'll always mm-hmm. be rewarded in life as well. You know, we build these credits in life mm-hmm. by doing the right things. Mm-hmm. And at some point, you know, you can, at some point you can call back in some of these credits. <laughs> I'm telling you, because it's a new generation, it's a new generation. Yeah. True. And, I, yeah. and I, I can give a, I can give a great example <coughs> mm-hmm. where, you know, I, you know, I worked with many, many young people who have done very, very well. Yeah. And as time goes on and technology becomes greater and greater, greater yeah. than my knowledge of technology. Yeah. Yeah. I can then tap into these very same people who are now yeah. successful business men and women yeah. and tap into their understanding and knowledge of technology, which I have very little clue of. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Business, I'm all right. Yeah, yeah. They are, you know, they're in the know-how of social media, know-how yeah, yeah. of all the things that, yeah. that, you know, this podcast, back in my day, we ain't, we ain't had no podcast. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, uh, but as, even, as a means of getting a message across. Yes. As a of means course. of marketing and a, me- and a mm-hmm. means of sharing. Mm-hmm. Now, if, if, if one did not invest in others, yeah, this might not be an opportunity to me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it, it comes full circle. Yeah, yeah. It comes full circle. Yeah. But you know, 
I love to. I, I love to give. You know, I love to give. I'm very much a humanitarian. Be it here, mm-hmm. you know, I worked in Africa. I've worked mm-hmm. everywhere. Um, around giving back. It's always a pleasure to give back. Yeah, uh, always a pleasure. And in terms of giving back, you mentioned the you know the charity process. Have mm-hmm. you set up any other foundations or charities or causes since then? Yeah. Um, because you, I remember you said that it was you. It lasted around five years. Yeah. before What did you pass it on? Or? Yeah, I passed it on. I passed yeah. it on. Um, I then went um and started to do very similar work for um. For, can you mention company name? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah no problem. Oh, I I went and started to do um charity work for BBC. Mm-hmm. So I worked internationally for BBC. So yeah. I was doing stuff for projects for BBC, Malawi, mm-hmm. and Namibia. Yeah. All over Europe. Um, and I passed the boss on. Um, unfortunately, the the. Because I was the founder of Brosis, mm-hmm. um, so to those I handed it down to, obviously they wouldn't carry the same passion mm-hmm. as a founder would. Yeah, you of know? course. Yeah. Um, so though it continue continues, it, it doesn't carry the same. Like the the fight in the belly isn't the yeah, same. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, I, and I'm not yeah. knocking those who carry. No, no, it, but yeah, I'm, it makes sense. I'm being truthful. Like it's just a different energy. Yeah, yeah. Um, in terms of found um, foundations, yeah, I set up um, the Steadwallen Foundation, which, mm-hmm. is, which is named after my brother who passed away. Mm-hmm. Um, two years ago, 2017. Mm-hmm. Um, so with that foundation, very, it sort of carries a similar trace to what I was doing prior, mm-hmm. but a lot of what he did. Okay. Uh, now, Stella has a great love of cricket. Yeah. So um, cricket was a major part of what he done internationally. Mm-hmm. You know, he's very well known within the cricket field, the cricket world. Yeah, yeah. So but um, he also used cricket as a sport. Yeah. Um, to engage people. As a and tool, to help, yeah. And to yeah. help, help them in different angles. Yeah. Um, Business, yeah. entrepreneurship, yeah. community. Mm-hmm. So the foundation does very much, very much the same in that. You know, we do annual events, yeah. which we've been doing for over twenty years now, twenty one years this year. Yeah, yeah. We do annual events, um, and loads of different products. You know, we take teams of professionals across, you know, across, the, across the world mm-hmm. to play cricket and get involved in, you know, in, 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 in school clubs and yeah, yeah. charitable events and so on and so on. And what you know, what people tend, what people see is that. Um, I put I put a lot of effort into into the sort of um, the charitable side, yeah. The um, the missionary side of my work, yeah. Um, yeah. that's because I have a good I I manage my money well when I was younger growing up, yeah. And um, I I manage my money now mm-hmm. as a businessman, mm-hmm. so it, it gives me the sort of the pleasures as I see and the fluidity and the and the you know the opportunity to do these things where mm-hmm. perhaps if I did things slightly differently, mm-hmm. I'd have to invest so much of my time and effort into straight business. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And less into my sort of um, missionary side. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas now I'm in a position where I can do a lot of missionary and mm-hmm. still do business, mm-hmm. but I'm all right. Yeah. Know? Yeah. So. So where do you see the foundation in the next ten years? The found the Stead Foundation, the Stead Wallen Foundation in the next ten years. It will, it will birth new foundations, because what it will do, it will, it will birth and raise and support and empower yeah. many of young people, young people that become older people, mm-hmm. um, or older people that become greater people, yeah, um, into greater things. Yes. So, and that's always going to be sort of my sense of how it looks going forward. Yeah. You know, so the foundation will do its stuff. We'll always deliver. Mm-hmm. But the keys asset will be the people in it. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. if if I only do three major events a year, as an example. Yes. But I carry through three solid people. Mm-hmm. Those three solid people will do could it could do one event each. Yeah. Yeah. So that would be be it directly or indirectly, that'll be six major yeah. events. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Which means I've doubled my capacity in events. Yeah, so true. to speak. Yeah, yeah. Quote unquote. Yeah. So for me, it's always going to be the value in the people that are in review. That's interesting. Yeah. The value in the people that are in review. Yeah. Um, because I'm I'm very confident that I'll always I can always deliver mm-hmm. projects, events, companies, blah blah blah. But my biggest asset is the people that are in my team or the people that are in my circle. And in terms of putting on events, what are the biggest hurdle, hurdles they will face? So you're empowering them to, you know, to do more or to, to kind of replicate what you've done. Um, 
but what are the barriers and the hurdles that they were actually face themselves when actually doing events in the community? You know what, the only barriers they will face would be themselves. Mm. Because everything is doable. Mm. The only barriers they will face is, is themselves. Because every, everything, that, everything else that comes in front of you doesn't just have to be a barrier. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, you know, it could be a stepping stone, a learning stone. Yeah. It doesn't just have to be a barrier that's going to stop you. Yeah. Yeah. So the only thing that can stop you is, your, is yourself. They're going to come across things around, hopefully by then, they would have been schooled well enough and they would have had the, I would have opened up in, enough networks, enough links and understanding. Yeah. That it won't be hard for yeah. them. You yeah. know, many of us didn't have the have the mentorship mm-hmm. of today. Mm-hmm. You know, um have the mentorship of today that, that makes things slightly easier. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um the guidance that you can yeah. tap into. So um I don't really foresee many, if any, real serious barriers mm-hmm. for, for for anyone going forward. Mm-hmm. You know, you apply yourself, you know, you go through due p- protocol mm-hmm. and process mm-hmm. um, and they'll be fine. So you mentioned, you know, about mentorship and things and a lot of people didn't have mentors growing up. Mm. Did you have a mentor? Cause I know you mentor a lot of people, but, you know, I know that your brother was a very, you know, powerful man in your life. Mm-hmm. Was he the only mentor in your life? No, I had, um, it's... It's mentor by terminology now. Okay. But you know, my mother would have been, would, would have always been a mentor. Mm-hmm. Um, my brother stayed obviously a mentor. And there was a there's a gent there's there's a guy, there's two guys. There's one guy called Mr. Mandela. Mm-hmm. Um a Sikh guy. Mm-hmm. Very very religious. Very, very religious. Mm-hmm. And I remember as a, when I was younger, he on a Saturday with most of my generation at the time. Mm-hmm. Would go into the city center, hang on the ramp, and so on. Yeah, yeah. I did my I did work placement when I was like like sixteen or something at um mandolin call solicitors, mm-hmm. and I started my placement. I mean, I started into I wanted to do law. Yes, and he the the guy who owned that Mister Mandler, he um rest in peace, passed also rest in peace. He he'd say to me like uh, you know, after we do the whole week in court and so on and do filing and stuff, he'd say. What did you do on Saturday? Ah, uh, chill in my bed, blah blah. He was like, no. Saturday mornings, get up and come to my house like seven, <laughs> seven o'clock in the morning. <laughs> For real? Yeah, like seven, eight o'clock. Thinking, this is serious. But I did it anyway. Um, so I'd go to his house at like eight o'clock in the morning. He'd say to me, um, because I had a love. For, I remember telling him I had a love for gardening. Yes. So I used to cut his grass. Mister mm-hmm. Malay lived um, in a nice house. So it was impressive. I think that that's part of the um, part of the drive for me every morning. Yeah, because that's the biggest house I'd ever seen. Remember, he's a lawyer back. He's a lawyer. Yeah. He's got a massive firm. Yeah, yeah. Very popular man. Yeah. His house was, you know, you th- every time you get that, you think, wow, it was massive. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Big house. And he said, oh, you know, cut my, like, cut the grass. So I'd cut the grass. He showed, actually, he showed me about putting lines in the grass to go up and come right down. And yeah, yeah. Half yeah. cut. And I just cut his grass. And after I cut his grass, um, his, his wife would always put out a platter of food. Okay. In the, yeah. living, in the living room. Yeah, yeah. And I had to sit on the floor while he sat in the chair. Yeah. And eat this food every single Saturday morning. Yeah. And whilst I sat for eating, he'd just speak. Okay. And just say things to me. About business or life or... Life. Yeah, okay. It wasn't about business, it was life. Words, mm-hmm. like, very much like wise words of wisdom. Yeah, yeah. And if, if you could visually, he, he generally had a long white beard. He yeah. Was, he was a Sikh. Yeah, yeah. Sikh gentleman, long white beard. And like every... Saturday, though it seemed, um, well, it, it was, yeah, it very much came across unscripted. Yeah. He, he never had a piece of paper. Mm-hmm. He just sat there and so whatever came to him at the time, yeah, or he'd yeah. ask me a question. And from yeah. that, he'd come into one. He might say, How was your week? And I'd go, Oh, um, I'll right, be with my brother. Okay. He'd have something to tell me about <laughs> arguing with your peers or yeah, your loved yeah, yeah. ones. Mm. And it was just like food for thought every mm. single Saturday. Mm. And some of the, you know, like, the things just riveted. And I think that's how I got my old head into, because it seemed now when I look back, yeah. like he was giving me all these solid quotes of life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it was just, it was just, it was just I felt I, was, I just gravitated to this man. Every time. I couldn't wait to get in that grass and cut. Yeah. Sometimes I wish to the grass so I, can sit, <laughs> so I can sit back there and just listen to him. Yeah. So Mr. Mandela, um, he was absolutely a massive part of my life, a young life. Yeah. And that's because as well, Everyone else in my generation was doing different things at the time, except yeah. for me. Yeah. Um, but even that, he used to say to me, like, don't worry. 
you're not missing nothing in the ramp. You're not missing yeah. nothing going, you know, kids' parties. Nothing, like, you know. Yeah. You're fine here cutting the grass. Yeah. And, when, you know, when you look back, you think, this is, like, the best teaching one could ever, yeah. ever get. Because it taught me, it taught me this, it taught me to, you know, get up and work. It taught me not, yeah. to, not to sleep in yeah. for crazy hours. Yeah, yeah. You know, cutting the grass as a teenager was a thing that, you, you know, you hide from your friends. From, you know, no one else yeah, yeah, see you yeah, cutting yeah, grass. Yeah, yeah. You know I mean? Another gentleman, uh, Mr. Ray Coombs, mm-hmm. um, he's still around Ray Coombs. He was my boys brigade captain, so I was in the boys brigade. Okay. So he yeah. taught he taught us a lot of stuff around you know, being sure and steadfast and mm-hmm. and strong and solid. Mr. Coombs, it was you know very in- influential to a lot of us, a lot mm-hmm. a lot of us, mm-hmm. especially a lot of us in the city boys as well. Mm-hmm. It was very influential. Um, Mr. Coombs, Mr. Mandela, and a gentleman called John Holcroft. Okay. Yeah. I met John. John. Yeah. John. You met John. Yeah. And John, John was later on in life. Mm-hmm. But what John, John was very good in his in his delivery, in his style. Because mm-hmm. John was more, where, where you said Mr. Man was like the wise old man. Mm-hmm. John was the old man, but had a, a, a lot of street knowledge. Okay, yeah. So John's influence as a mentor came from came in a different way, a different style. Mm-hmm. So you're, you you respect them both the same. Yeah, yeah. But your dialogue with them would be totally different. Um, Mr. Manler would never swear. Okay, yeah, yeah. He's soft, soft spoken. Yeah, yeah. Say a few words and stop speaking. Mm-hmm. Give, it, give you time to digest what he just said. Mm-hmm. And probably come back to you and say, what did I just say? Okay. And then you'd repeat it and he says, why have you missed that? What, why have you missed that bit? Was that not important to you? Yeah. To Mr. Manler. Like, okay. Was that important? Yeah, I, said, yeah. I said, yes, it was. So if it was that important, why is it you can't remember it? That True. kind of thing. Yeah, John, yeah. on the other hand now, was very much... Shut up and get out there and do that now. Yeah, yeah. Very different styles, yeah. but just as effective. Yeah. Just as effective. Yeah. So John Holcroft, he, um, he, actually, when I set up Brosis, I had, I had a, I had, I set up Brosis in one office mm-hmm. in Edgebaston at the time. Then yeah. we moved to a bigger building. So then I had one, two, three, three offices in the same building, three rooms in the, in one massive building. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's good going there, and then I wanted to expand Brosis yeah. into the area, the city, which mm-hmm. I thought would be very impacting, you know. And you know, I knocked on many doors, you know, mm-hmm. saying, "Listen, there's something doing HIV, Ed, blah blah." blah. Psh, shut that door. Yeah. No, can't be associated. Oh, yeah. um, I didn't have enough money to, like, b- you know, to build a building or have my own building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I went to John, who, who was, was John had quite a few buildings. John, yeah. yeah. And I went to John one day. I said, "John, listen, I'm." Doing this project, uh, I need uh, my own building, my own space, my own office. Yeah. I need this, blah, blah. Did you know John before this happened or this is how you... How did I, meet? I think this is how I met him, you know. Okay. I don't think I knew John. Mm-hmm. I think someone else told me, I think someone else told me about him. Yeah. My friend Errol Lawson, actually, I think, had said to me about John. Mm-hmm. Because Errol had approached John about something else as well. Yeah, yeah. And um, I'd approached John, sat down, John was all scruffly hair, just... They're there in a chair, mm-hmm. like, so John, this is what I'm doing, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. And you sit, out, you sit there and say, um, fine. There's the keys. Keep the damn place clean. <laughs> Mop up after you. Lock up after you. That's what it's like. I say, so that he goes, yeah. Then, then it'll be like, oh, I've got things to do. Get gun. <laughs> gun, gun, gun. <laughs> and you sit there pondering now, you know, do I, you know, do I sit here, do I wait for the next step, or you, or you just do? Because he seems like he just, you, you, you know, you always think it's a test. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, I set up office and, you know, very successful again. Yeah. Um, he gave me my first, in terms of external building. Yeah. He gave me, actually, gave me, he's seen the success of it and he gave me my first computer, mm-hmm. first desk, chair and telephone. Wow. And he said to me, um, I buy the telephone, you pay the bills. He <laughs> said, you know, you pay your own phone bill. Yeah. Um, I never had to contribute to, like, electric bills and nothing. Like, nah. Oh, that's really good. Nothing. Yeah. Like, he goes, you know, just do good. Yeah. Just do good. Yeah. Um, John, you know, John passed away a couple of years after that as well. But um, you know, there's been some great people, man, in my community. And if I look at a pattern, yeah, the pattern is everyone that was a major influence to me mm-hmm. was much older than me at the time, mm-hmm. much much older. Now we have a now we have peer mentoring, yeah, where young people can mentor each other. Okay, yeah, you know, where the where the generations are much closer. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we need to have that balance mm-hmm. where you can be mentored by someone within your generation. Yeah. But, but I think there's, there's so a, there's experience there's life. wealth. Yeah. 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 Wealth of knowledge and experience from those who are, you know, not say they before, but those who have gone through it prior to us. Yeah. And can feed back in. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, you know, I say if, if you can find a mentor who is, 
done it. Mm-hmm. And not even, you know, you can, your, your mentor doesn't have to be in the same line of business of you, business as you. Mm-hmm. Your mentor just has to be able to give you, pass down something. Yeah. That will help you along the way. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah. sometimes you, you don't, you know, you don't actually go out looking for a mentor. So someone just becomes your mentor. Yeah, yeah, They're yeah. sometimes seeing you. Yeah. What they find themselves. There's that saying that says, you know, when the student is ready, the, the teacher will. Yeah. So, so true. Yeah. So, so true. So true. It's one of those things. I mean, you know, I mean, for myself going through life, I would attribute you as one of my mentors, mm-hmm. um, as well as a few other key individuals. And again, you know, you're never looking for it. It just appears yeah. because you're ready to receive the information, the knowledge and the wisdom that they, they can, you know, instill in, inside of you and things. So, yeah, definitely powerful and really good stuff. And, and sorry, I'm just going to, but you know what, as well, it's yeah. um, I think I might have mentioned it earlier, but it's like not wanting anything back in return mm-hmm. but to see others do well and yeah. be successful yeah you know like there is in terms of reward you know some people do it for financial gain mm-hmm. some people do it for fame mm-hmm. for recognition but you know what um, I think the I think the beauty of I think the beauty of being successful or mm-hmm. helping others be successful is when doesn't matter who gets the credit. Mm. You know I mean, it yeah. doesn't matter who the hell gets the credit, mm-hmm. as long as something good comes of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I can definitely, I can definitely agree with you on that one. I mean, you know, we we spoke about um, before in terms of your your book. What type of things are you going to be talking about and discussing in your book? Is it going to be more words of wisdom, like you received yourself, or is it going to be more about your life and your the story of how you became who you are today and the things you've achieved and done. Can you just tell us a little bit about the book that you got coming out? Um, is it about the first book, the second or the third? Or the book? <laughs> I like that. I like that. The, the initial book, the first okay. book, yeah. The first book is very much an, an, an introduction uh-huh. to, to, the, to an introduction of myself. Yeah. Because, um, you know, one, people are still getting to know, people think they know no mm-hmm. you. So basically putting myself out there, um, mm-hmm. sharing you know, some some parts of my life that I haven't really shared to, mm-hmm. to many. Mm-hmm. Um, my journeys, successes, the highs, the lows, the people mm-hmm. who um who were in it, mm-hmm. um, tools that I used, mm-hmm. um, a bit of advice that I could share. Yeah. Yes, you know the the book is very much my my journey to a part. Yeah. Um, so basically just, just sort of dipping my toes into different aspects of my life mm-hmm. that that kind of makes me a whole person mm-hmm. today. And then my second book, I'll probably go into more detail, in depth. Yeah. But I mean, it's going to be everything, you know, relationships, mm-hmm. um, losses, you know, the, the impact of loss the, in, in terms of everything, in terms of loss of loved ones, mm-hmm. Lost in business because you know, it hasn't all though things are right, you know, mm-hmm. it hasn't always been great. You know, yeah, you know, we all take up, we all taken our blows. I've taken my blows and mm-hmm. made some some stupid financial decisions. Mm-hmm. Well, it seems stupid now, but just wrong, so not stupid, take it back, some wrong decisions mm-hmm. which seemed right at the time. But when you're looking back, it, maybe because it's slightly different, yeah. So, um, but, but so is business that's the that's the nature of business, yeah. That's the nature, that's, that's, that's yeah. nature of business. You've got to take those risks, mm-hmm. um. So just looking at all those different things, putting them down into a book, and um, encouraging reading. <laughs> I actually got audio books, but I mean, like, yeah, yeah it's just putting it out there. Part yeah. of part of my legacy. Yeah. Something my kids can look back on, yeah. you know, in time to come. And it's what are some of your favorite books um, that you've read yourself? Oh my life. Um, five Pillars. I love Five Pillars. I can read that. Yeah. By Jim Rohn. I can read it. A yeah, thousand, yeah, yeah, I can yeah, yeah. Actually, literally yeah, read yeah, it a yeah, thousand yeah. times. Yeah. Um, Jim Rohn and um, I can't remember the guy's name. It's Twelve Pillars, though. Twelve Pillars. Sorry, what did I say? Five? Twelve Pillars. Five. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Twelve Pillars. Yeah. 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 You got to edit that shit out. Um, <laughs> there was. A, there's also. Um, oh, what's it called? It's called Happy. Yeah. Um, I can't remember the title. Yeah. So Happy's another one of um, these great books that I've read. Um, loving it. It's got, I got quite a few books in it. To be fair. Yeah. I got. I got. I got quite. I got quite a few. Uh, quite a few books that I've, that, you know, I've 
I'm a lover of. I'm just trying to encourage reading. You know, mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to my book, my book sitting, mm-hmm. sitting, you know, alongside. And the bookshelves, Waterstones and, then bookshelves, and, and, and Amazon and everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. definitely. And, you know, I've got, I've got a great publisher. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, as well, that at some point, someone's going to ask someone, uh-huh. like, mention some of the, um, the books that you read. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and my name, yeah, my name will come up. My name and the title of my book. Yeah. Up. You know what I mean, now, in terms of I, I got a um, four shot for me. So my very very first, you know, and you know when you've been working in business for years and community for years, and I mean, it's a credit to me to even that you know even a published company even thinks mm-hmm. what I've got to mm-hmm. say, mm-hmm. people are interested in. Mm-hmm. You know, you got you go you generally go through life just keep doing. Yeah, yeah. And a man once told me actually I forgot a great enough mentor Sydney Bartley. Mm-hmm. Um, he once said to me, um, one of our problems is that we don't document our journey. Mm. And that is why we get written out of history. Ooh, okay. Um, and he told me that years and years ago. He actually told me that when I was doing brosis. That's how mm-hmm. he always said to me, document everything. Yeah. Brosis. You know, you will, you will be part of history. Because every time someone wants to mention mm-hmm. um, that specific field of work, yeah, yeah. in terms of black and blah, 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 yeah. your name should be mentioned. Yeah, yeah. As you said, you, know, you Terence Wallen, should be a prominent name. Mm-hmm. They, sh- they should never mention HIV AIDS. Birmingham, without mentioning the word your name. Terence Wallen. Yeah. So yeah. he said, document, yeah. document everything. Because yeah. historically, it'll still be there. Yeah. Put it into YouTube, it's going to put it into Google, it's going to be there. True. Um, so with, with that said, mm-hmm. um, it's a, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm over the moon that even a publishing company mm-hmm. will, will be interested in publishing what I have to say. Mm-hmm. And I have the belief that people out there, my story can make a difference. Mm-hmm. So, um, DMJ Publishing, yeah, with my, with my, with my sole publishing company, and um, they will be responsible for, for the next step in my. Sounds good. I mean, I know DMJ Publishing published my book, uh, Thirty Passive Income Ideas, mm-hmm. and you know it's interesting what you were saying. What Sydney Barley said in terms of they should never mention, um, you know, HIV AIDS and working with the community without mentioning your mentioning your name. It's the same way I am with, with passive income ideas. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, no one should be mentioning passive income without mentioning Daryl James. That's, exactly. That's a fact. So, yeah, it's, it's really good to become key influence in, in whichever area that you're actually working in um, is, is, is key. It's, it's definitely good. Is there anything else that you wanted to um, say to the listeners? I just want to say, you know, it, um, it is about getting a work-life balance. Mm-hmm. Very important as mm-hmm. well in terms of being successful. Mm-hmm. Got to get that balance right. You, you know, don't just work. To, don't, just, don't, don't just work to work. Yeah. Just, you know, you don't just work to pay bills. You yeah, know, yeah. You know, enjoy your yeah. success. Enjoy yeah. the fruits of your labor. Mm-hmm. Um, another saying taking that with us when we're going. Mm-hmm. So enjoy True. the fruits of our enjoy the fruits of our labor. Um, I balance in terms of work and family. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, if like, if being rich like, is your only goal, I don't think you'll ever be. Mm. Really. You ne- you'll, you'll never be wealthy. Mm. You never, you never will be rich. Mm. If that's your only goal, yeah, yeah. You know, you, you that you gotta be, you gotta be rich in life, mm-hmm. not just rich in you know financially. Mm-hmm. You gotta be rich. People gotta see you as, as your 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 presence. Being in their space, yeah, is a rich feeling to them. Yes, you know, yeah, and it's, it's, it's that balance. You know, remain humble at all times. Mm-hmm. Give people time. Give people love. Mm. Um, stay grounded. Um, but have a but, you know, but have something about yourself. Have a strong presence mm-hmm. about yourself. Let people know mm-hmm. that you know your worth. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, let people. You know, I, I'm gonna, so this, this has got nothing to do. Nothing, but it has got something. To do, something. Okay. Yeah. I once was in a. Um, you know, when people say like. People's presence makes a difference. Now, I I've been a big fan of um. I've been a big fan in terms of reggae. I've been a big fan of Gregory Isaacs, mm-hmm. and I remember being in a in an area, mm. um, and I remember Gregory Isaacs walk into this room, mm. and his with without saying a word, yeah, his whole presence was felt mm-hmm. without mm-hmm. saying a word. Mm. Now, to me, I always remember that moment because to me, that just spoke volumes around your self-worth, your yeah. self-belief. Yeah. And you bring in that where you go. Yeah, yeah. 
So it's not about going in there and people bigging you up. Mm -hmm. It's about you walking to somewhere mm -hmm. and people saying, this is a, this this man stands for something. Yeah, yeah. You know, be it your posture. But I always remember him walking in mm. and that like, you could just feel like whole room is like in awe. Yeah, yeah. And he hasn't said nothing. You can feel the energy. Yeah, he hasn't said nothing or done nothing. Yeah. And to him, he just walked into a room. Mm -hmm. He just walked. He just walked into a room, mm -hmm. and the, you know the, the same applies, you know, as as an individual. You know, make your make your presence be felt. Mm -hmm. People want to be around you. People want to hear what you got to say. Yeah. Um. People people believe in you as well. That's another thing. You know, mm -hmm. you've got to be believable. You've mm -hmm. got, you know, the proof must be in the pudding. Because mm -hmm. there'll be a lot. There'll be a lot of people who who fake or who will fake it till they make it. Mm -hmm. A lot of people will um say, but not deliver. And mm -hmm. a lot of people say, oh, I can do this. I can do that. Yeah. Um. Yeah. But won't deliver. And I had the same conversation with the young guy on yesterday morning, actually. Yesterday, Sunday? Yeah, mm -hmm. yes, yesterday morning mm -hmm. with a, a young guy who had phone, who had called me. I kind of mentioned him about a few, a number of, a number of things. Mm -hmm. And then within an hour, we'd gone to a tick box and those three things had been ticked off. Oh, that's good, yeah. Um, and I was saying to him around, around his circle, mm -hmm. you know, like, surround yourself with doers, mm -hmm. people that are doing, or people who who do what they say they can do or will do. Yes. Um, you know, so just getting just getting the balance right in you know mm -hmm. in your whole life, you know, but certainly don't just work, you know, and forget all the other small things that are just as just as important as mm -hmm. the big as the big things. Like mm -hmm. family, like friends, mm -hmm. like loyalty, like trust, like love, mm -hmm. like respect. Mm -hmm. Don't forget none of those things. Because mm -hmm. once you have all those things and the foundations is there you notice everything else falls in place. Yeah. And I, I don't think I could be successful unless I had a solid team behind me. That's the mm -hmm. God's honest truth. Mm -hmm. I don't think, like my success isn't just down to me. My mm -hmm. success is because I have people around me that makes me feel like I can do it. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? I always feel like I have a, like I take, I take, I generally take risks now. Yeah. Because I have a, I have a massive cushion mm -hmm. around me mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. makes me feel like you could take the risks. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I think I've said it to you a thousand times. In my head, mm -hmm. I would say, I'm never going to be hungry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have. Yeah. I'm never going to be homeless. Mm -hmm. And the only reason I can say that now, mm -hmm. because I'm, I can take risks mm -hmm. with my properties. I can take risks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why? Because I always believe that I have enough credits yeah, yeah. out there yeah. that no one's ever going to see me mm -hmm. sleep, sleep on the floor. Yeah, yeah. Or no one's never going to offer me a slice of bread. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so I just think, the, the bigger picture is that success comes from from being part of something else. Yeah. You know, there is no iron team. So, so it comes from part of being something else. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't have been successful without, without the help, without the help of, uh, the help of others, even me helping others mm -hmm. helped me to be successful. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. it made me learn more about myself. Mm -hmm. It made me value myself even more because then I see what, what, what I'm giving to others. Mm -hmm. How it's changing their lives, mm -hmm. so it made me feel like okay, so I must mm -hmm. be doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So um, get that balance right. Get that yeah. get that balance right, man. Get that balance right. Yeah. Powerful words from Terry and Suana, man. Terry, thank you very much. Thanks for your words of wisdom, the information that you've given us. Thank you. Man. You know, um, this has been the BMF podcast, business marketing and finance. I am your host, Dow James, and we'll see you on the next episode. This is the Business Marketing and Finance Podcast. The podcast for all your business marketing and financial needs. Get insight from experienced professionals as they delve deep into their passions and share their knowledge each week with your host, Daryl James. Like to follow or learn more? You know what to do. Hit that subscribe button now.